doing these seven things can throw off your entire launch and we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that you have a successful launch. So make sure that you stay tuned for this entire video where I am going to be sharing the seven things you need to do before you launch your business. Babes, I'm Chanel the Brand Hustler and this is a channel for all of my hustle babes who are interested in getting insight on the entrepreneur journey while learning essential marketing and business tips for their brand. If that sounds like you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and join the Hustle Babe community. Today's video is going to be so good because if you have been prepping for your launch, these are definitely things that you want to make sure that you do before you launch. A lot of people have the habit of just coming up with a business idea and going full throttle with the launch and they miss either one or all of these seven things that I'm going to share with you today. Before I get into that though, I want to make sure that I tell you all about my launch-a-thon that I'm having next week starting Monday. We are going to have videos Monday all the way through Saturday and those videos are going to be catered to people who are in the launch process, okay? So make sure that you mark your calendars for that and hit the notification bell so that way you can be notified every time I upload a video, all right? But to kind of give you a dose of what the launch-a-thon is going to be like, I wanted to bring you guys this video. So today, like I said, I'm going to be giving you things that you need to make sure that you do before you launch. So I've compiled a list of seven. Now this isn't an all inclusive list because if I was to tell you all the things that you needed to do before launch, we will be here literally all day, all night. And I don't want you to be here. So I have kind of picked in chose like what I felt like a lot of people either forget to do or what I feel like is most important to come up with this list of seven. Okay. So if you are excited, make sure that you go ahead and comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what type of business that you're launching and grab your notebook and your pen and let's get to it. The first thing that you want to make sure you do before you launch is solidify your business idea. Pretty much, I feel like when you have a business idea, right, it should automatically solve a problem or provide a resource to a particular group of people. And so sometimes we come up with these business ideas solely because of like a hobby or the need for money at the time or something like that. And we forget that the true definition of a business, right, actually is to help solve a problem or provide that need for someone else. So I want you to like take the time to reflect on the business idea that you have and figure out what problem does it actually solve. So the way that you do this is you perform what's called a problem and solution analysis. And this is something that I teach people within my ultimate launch course how to do, right? So I can't sit here and do it in this video because it's an entire lesson. However, the problem and solution analysis really kind of digs deep so that you can identify what solution your products actually provide and what the problem is at hand. So that way you can create better content, come up with better collections, target your audience better, de develop better messaging, do all of that stuff, which is stuff that you need to make sure that your business uh, can perform well in the long run, right? So definitely, Solidifying your business idea is step, not step, but the first thing that you need to make sure that you do before you launch, right? And then the second thing that you want to make sure that you do before you launch is you want to identify that target audience. So like I said, you want to make sure that you solidify the business idea, but everybody in the world doesn't have the same problems. So if you know that your business is in the, the business of problem solving or providing a resource to a need, it's important for you to identify what group of people have that particular need or have that particular problem because I guarantee it is not every single person in the world. There are over 7.6 billion people in the world and if everyone had the same problem, literally we wouldn't be able to progress as a world at all. But different people have different problems, different people have different skill sets, different people have different abilities, period, and that's how we're able to run kinda sorta smoothly as a world right and so it's important for you to identify what like kind of small group of people have the particular problem or the need that you solve 
And when I say small group, I'm not talking about 10 people or something like that. Yes, you're going to be able to target hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people within that subgroup, but I can guarantee it's not gonna be every single person in the world. So if you're thinking that your business is for everyone, male, female, ages two through 75, who like basic clothing all the way to uh, super blinged out clothing or who goes to mountain trips and also goes to brunches and who travels the world but also stays at home. If that's what you're thinking, then I want you to actually take the time to rethink that and actually come up with the group of people who you can actually target. Once again, this is something that we talk about within the Ultimate Launch course because it there is a strategy for you to do this kind of like step by step so that it is way more clear, way more easy, and definitely more defined for you when it comes to your target audience. The third thing that you wanna make sure you do is you want to develop a pricing strategy for your products, right? And so when I say pricing strategy, I mean there should be a concrete kind of formula, if you wanna say, that you go by when it comes to pricing all of the products that you release. The number one mistake that people make is coming up with prices off the top of the dome as things uh, come to them, as things are delivered, or as you're sourcing things from vendors, etc. You want to have a formula that you can literally plug a certain number into and it gives you the price for your product. So the way that I do this is I actually have a pricing and profit formula and I'll put the video up here somewhere um where i actually shared a little snippet of that pricing and profit formula and i actually gave you access to like a free spreadsheet as well that had the pricing and profit formula built in so i'll link that up here on the screen so you can check that out if you're interested in kind of using what my pricing and profit formula is and just copying and pasting it for your business you can definitely do that in that video i also talk about just the fact of factors of pricing and things that you want to consider and things like that but you definitely want to make sure that you have a pricing strategy so that way you know in the future when you hire employees it's easy for them to come up with prices off the top of the dome as well or let's say you want to come out with hundreds of products or something it's easy for you to have that but not only that it develops consistency because now you kind of know like you're making a certain percentage of profit every single time off of every single product because you have this you have this solid formula that you use for your pricing. The fourth thing that you want to make sure that you do before you launch is you want to establish a professional presence. This one I feel like is probably one of the most forgotten. So when I say professional presence, I am talking about grabbing your name wherever you can. And I don't mean just trademarking legally or anything like that because, you know, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to get into all of that jazz. And I also don't recommend like just full out trademarking something if it's your first business, your first go around and you don't even know, you know, how things will play out I always tell if this is your very first business I say like you know wait a month or so before you consider trademarks because a lot of times when you start a business right you're going to have a certain maybe look or maybe even a name and that name may change over the first quarter or even the first year because you realize that your brand has developed in a way that doesn't really match the original visual or the the original uh, name or something that you had for your business in the first place. So when it comes to trademarking, that's one of those things that you wanna make sure is done when you're for sure, for sure. As far as getting your business license and all that stuff, definitely do that stuff off the bat. But anyway, when I talk about establishing your professional presence, what I mean is making sure that you have a professional email address, that's one. And so I don't mean like, Sandra's boutique at gmail.com. What I mean is going to a place like G Suite or going to one of those other professional email services and buying, right, an actual email that instead of saying Sandra's boutique at gmail.com, it says contact or info at Sandra's boutique.com, right? So it ends in your actual domain. Not only that, but in order for that to end in your domain, you need to make sure that you purchase the domain. So your domain is basically what you type into the web address bar when someone is trying to go to your website. So for example, my actual website is www.thebrandhustler.com. My agency's website is www.hustlebabeagency.com. 
our emails are also the same. So if you're trying to contact the agency, for example, we have emails such as team at hustlebabeagency.com or you have support at thebrandhustler.com. All of those are professional emails. And so it's a couple of reasons why you wanna have a professional email. One, it just makes your brand just more cohesive. Two, it's easier for a person to remember. But three, once you start building your business and you're interested in, in doing certain things, whether that be credit, whatever, I don't know, right? You, It's just better to always have an actual business email and also an actual domain that's tied to your website. So instead of it saying www.shopify.com backslash Sandra's Boutique, you can literally buy a domain that just says www.sandrasboutique.com, okay? Another thing that you wanna do when it comes to establishing your professional presence is you wanna think about like all the social platforms that you think you're gonna use, even if you're not using them off the bat, and go out there and grab that name. That is something that I do all the time. So if I think of a business idea, there's certain things that I haven't even launched yet. But I've already grabbed the <laughs> grab the the Instagram handle or the TikTok handle or something for it, right? So that way I have it and when I'm ready to come out with whatever it is that I have in my pocket, I can actually use it, okay? And so that's something to do as well because what happens is if you wait until last minute and that name is taken, then you have to do all this extra stuff to your name. Like I've seen people add like three underscores, a period, all this stuff. So instead of it just being at Sandra's Boutique, um, it's like at underscore shop underscore Sandra's dot boutique. And that's a whole lot, right? And I just personally feel like the easier it is for me to type in your name in any search bar, whether that's on Google or whether that's on Instagram, whether that's on YouTube, it's it's better for me to actually want to follow through and see the profile on the other end. If I have to do all these underscores, periods, and all this extra stuff, like I'm probably gonna give up halfway through me trying to figure out, um, you know, what your page is or where your page is. For the fifth thing, it kind of bounces bouncies it kind of piggybacks off of um what i just said so the fifth thing that you want to make sure that you do before you launch is establish your internal and external brand this this is the simplest way that i can put it without like getting real deep in my bag um but pretty much think of your internal brand as everything that people can't visually see if that makes sense so think about an experience. People can't really see an experience because they feel an experience. Think about like tone or voice. They don't necessarily see tone or voice. They hear or you know what I'm saying? Hear a, a tone of voice or something like that, right? And so when it comes to like your internal brand, you want to make sure that you're hashing out like your brand story, what your brand's voice is, your brand's tone, your brand's personality, all that stuff because brands kind of are like human beings if, if you want to be completely honest. Like you want to kind of build your brand to be like human-like so that it can connect with people okay so human-like brands do very very well because people can build emotional connections with them faster and buying is an emotional process so if you can build an emotional connection through your brand with your audience nine times out of ten it's going to be easier for you to sell whatever product collection item to them now, when it comes to your external brand, that's stuff that people actually see. So that's all your visuals. That's your website, your logo, your colors, your fonts, all of that fancy stuff that we do at the Hustle Babe Agency. So uh, it's important for you to build both your internal and your external. A lot of times people skip over internal and go straight to external. But in reality, you want to build out the internal first and have your external display what's inside, if that makes sense, right? So when we design websites, for example, at the Hustle Babe Agency, we take a lot of things into consideration. Even when it comes to you filling out the forms that we ask you to fill out before we start on your website, we ask you questions about like your audience. We ask you questions about your brand story. We ask you questions about your price points, what experience you want your customers to have. We ask you all of these things because that helps us create an idea for your brand, but then that also helps us give you ideas to make sure that the visuals are portraying 
what it is that you're telling us you want your audience to experience. So we don't just design just to make things look cute. We design with intention and we design with the mindset that we want to attract your audience and convert your audience, right? And so it's important for you to remember that external should show off what's internal. So like, you know how people be like, you're beautiful inside and out? Think about your brand that way too. Your brand should be beautiful inside and out and not just visually. Which brings me to number six. So the sixth thing that you want to do before you launch your business is to build your email list. So this one is probably like one of the ones that's a little bit obvious. Um, and so when I say email list, you can talk about your SMS list as well. I say build both because SMS and email can definitely play off of each other. Um, but you definitely want to build your email list before you launch because having people on your email list can actually get you sales, like can guarantee you sales in a way on your launch day. Especially if you had the right strategy to get those people on the list in the first place. Now, if you're just like grabbing emails randomly and asking your uncles, your aunts, all this other stuff for their emails or stealing emails or or whatever you're doing, like obviously then yeah, it, building your email list probably won't do anything for you. But if you actually have a strategy to build your email list and you have a strategy to attract that specific audience that we spoke about early in this video, then you can definitely make sales like literally first day from the fact that you have that email list, which is incredible, right? And so one of the things that I talked about in one of my videos recently, and I'll put the video on the screen, I shared that I had an 11K launch, right? And so one of the things that I did in that 11K launch was I built my email list and I sold to my email list before I even opened it up to the public. And my selling to my email list actually allowed me to like um, get all of my pre-sales, like sell out of all of my pre-sales, right? So having your email list and building it the right way can definitely help. And that is another thing that we actually cover in the ULC course. Um, but the last and final thing that I want to make sure that I share um, today, the seventh thing that you want to make sure you do, this one is super important, but so many people forget about this, is you want to make sure that you are setting launch goals. You want to make sure you want to make sure that you set goals, period, in your business. So that's quarterly goals, monthly goals, etc. And it doesn't you can't just skip over your launch like if you are about to launch you definitely want to make sure that you have established some goals that you want to hit and when it comes to establishing launch goals it can be kind of tricky because you have nothing to base it off of in terms of performance of your business and things like that so it can be really really hard to, to kind of figure out um but there's a way that you can set goals you, there's a way that you can set goals based off of like your budget based off of the pricing of your items and how much inventory you have as well as how much money are you putting aside to certain things and things like that so it's important for you to kind of think about all the things that you can quantify in your business and set goals based off of those things if that makes any sense i'm trying to i'm trying to explain it high level so that i don't spend like 50 minutes trying to explain how to set launch goals but in the launchathon i actually am going to be doing a video on setting launch goals okay so if you're interested in that topic um in particular then definitely make sure that you hit the subscription button and the notification bell because for the launchathon i'm definitely talking about setting launch goals in a particular video okay so those are the seven things that you want to make sure that you do before you launch comment down below which one of these that you didn't even think about so if i said one if i said something today that you hadn't even thought about like you hadn't thought about doing for your launch comment down below letting me know what that is if you are not subscribed to this channel already make sure that you hit the subscription button give this video a thumbs up share it with someone that you know that it can help like i said stay tuned for the launchathon but if you are interested in the ultimate launch course because you're ready to get started right now and you want to get to the nitty gritty you can go ahead and open up my description box so that you can uh get all the information for the launch course but Make sure that you are following me on Instagram and on TikTok at the brand Hustler. And other than that, I'm going to see y'all later, Hustle Babes. Bye.